Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, returning subscribers, and people wondering why my upload schedule for this series was incredibly inconsistent. Shut up! Uh, first point I'd like to make. I am so, so sorry. So, you know how at the beginning of the series, I was trying to get rid of the little portal icon and I ticked this little box in the corner? And you know how I was also struggling to land in my portals whenever I was trying to use a momentum physics? And I said that this game didn't have the portal gravity mechanic? Uh, yeah. I am so sorry to anyone who actually plays Portal legitimately, like for speedrunning purposes. I'm so sorry you had to suffer through that. Anyway, let, let's get to the point. I'm sure my one viewer is dying to know whether or not I actually plan on Let's Playing the sequel. Uh, no, I don't have any plans right now to actually do it. As many gripes as I have about the sequel's numerous plot holes, I just can't really bring myself to Let's Play it out of fear that I would be doing a disservice to the game itself. Maybe one day I'll be good enough at making videos to actually feel comfortable of bringing a Let's Play worthy of what I consider these games to be to the table, uh, but for now I have no intention of doing so. Now that that's out of the way, I can talk a little bit about more of Portal's development. I mean, I've already mentioned our Bacular drop a couple of times in the video, but now I can actually show you images, and you know what? Okay, hold up. Screw the stupid music! I hate this music! Do you understand what I have had to go through, and how much I've had to listen to this stupid looping 40 second music? Listen, I know some people enjoy it, but after having to listen to it for so long, and even for some of the bonus content that I had to do for this, I need a change of pace. People who I stole this from, please don't be mad. Anyway, the people who worked on our Bacular Drop would eventually go on to get hired by Valve and expanded the concept into Portal. Portal in and of itself was made of the same engine as Half-Life, another famous game made by Valve. In fact, they pretty much stole so much from it that Shell, the literal main character's voice, is literally taken from a generic citizen screaming. And no, I still have not played Half-Life, stop asking. Some other things that I want to go over are from the specific teaser trailer for the game. It's presented as a sort of orientational video, although a lot of the chambers that they actually quote-unquote show off are mostly just test chambers with very little inside of them. I think the turrets had a different voice actor that wasn't Ellen McLean, because Ellen McLean did the voice for the turrets and GLaDOS, if, in case you didn't know. It also showed up a couple of earlier concepts, such as an earlier design of the portals, an earlier design of the emancipation grid, pretty much earlier designs for everything. Also, the trailer, of course, has to look incredibly better from the actual quality of the game because, you know, we gotta actually push products. So the entire thing was probably made in Source Filmmaker while the rest of the game was made on a literal 2008 engine. Another thing that I want to go over are the specific radio transmissions that were scattered around the game and what they actually mean. First of all, I think I missed up somewhere around Chamber 12 when it came to the transmissions during my Let's Play, which is why there was a bonus transmission stuffed into the end. If anyone can tell me where that is, please let me know, I'll pin it in the comments. Another interesting thing about the transmissions is that they're all labeled under the file name Dinosaur. Like Dinosaur 0, Dinosaur 01, Dinosaur 02, stuff like that. Not sure why, I just wanted to throw that one in. The transmissions, as well as the achievement, were added into the game as a while later as a part of a ARG leading up to the release of Portal and Half-Life 2 Episode 2, which actually ended with the extended ending of the robot pulling Shell back into Aperture. Yeah, that took people by surprise when it first came out. Most of the transmissions are basic stuff, like revealing images for the next game, like the co-op mode, the official name of the owner of Aperture Science, Cave Johnson, and the Borealis. The Borealis is a ship that went missing in the Half-Life universe and came back in Episode 2. For more information, you can go to the Half-Life Wiki, which I have linked in the description. Also, of course, all of the information can be found on the Half-Life Wiki. Way to go, Portal fans. Another thing that I want to talk about are the Ratman dens, which can be found around the latter half of the game. Doug Ratman, that's, uh, that, that's his actual first name. You remember that I couldn't remember that? Anyway, Doug was the only survivor after GLaDOS gassed the place, and now he's trying to help the player character defeat GLaDOS. Again, this gets expanded on later in the sequel, including other aspects of his personality, such as the fact that he likes the companion cube, so much so much so that he actually carries one around with him. His use in the game is mostly just relegated to warnings and outdated memes. Oh, yeah, the cake. Fun fact about that cutscene, it's actually rendered in real time in the game. In fact, by using a cheat called slash no clip, you can actually get out into that room with a cake. Also, what are what exactly are these balls supposed to be? They aren't morality cores, and 
These just look like Aperture Science Edgeless Safety Cubes. What, never heard of an Aperture Science Edgeless Safety Cube? Well, that's because it goes unused in the main game, but don't worry. We'll get to it later. I guess because we're talking about the ending, we can also go over some other aspects of it. The blue core isn't just talking out of its it's actually giving a cake recipe. In fact, it's not even the first place where you can find this cake recipe. If you get rid of all the weird text on the various monitors around the facility, you would actually get this same recipe. Here's an actual picture of the cake. It apparently comes from a cafe that was near the office that they were working at. The original reason they even used the cake in the first place was that they wanted to give the player a reason to keep going, and as some sort of reward. Apparently, after about 10 minutes of silence, someone brought up the idea of cake, and with that, a meme was born. Another thing that happened happens is Gladys's line of I'm gonna be real here, I have no idea what this line means considering the sequel, but considering all the connections to Half-Life and the fact that the sequel was kind of a reboot of the series, I mean seriously just look at how the design for the cores has evolved. Way to keep consistent, Valve. I wouldn't be surprised if they just retconned this line out. And another thing too, another thing that I want to touch on is Hoopy the Hoop. This thing. Apparently, Valve thought that this thing was going to be the cake or the companion cube, which they sarcastically stated that they were going to be making merch of. It's also hidden in a lot of places of Portal 2. Wonder why. And that's about everything that I wanted to talk about. But one more thing. You may have noticed that some lines in my Let's Play showed up in the game that aren't actually there. Well, that's because there's a bunch of unused GLaDOS lines that I loved so much that I tried to figure out ways to add them back in. I'll leave a link in the description, but be wary of spoilers, obviously. Also, most of the cut lines are just rephrases, but I'll go ahead and play some of the more interesting ones. Maybe you think you're helping yourself. But you're not. This isn't helping anyone. Look, we're both stuck in this place. I'll use lasers to inscribe a line down the center of the facility, and one half will be where you live, and I'll live in the other half. Huh, there isn't enough neurotoxin to kill you, so I guess you win. Huh, I'm making more. That's going to take a few minutes, though. Meanwhile, oh look, it's your old pal, the rocket turret. And that is the end of it. Wait, one more thing. There are two more sets of achievements that I had yet to get. First off is the cupcake, fruitcake, and crazy vanilla cake achievements. The way that you get them is by doing the advanced chambers. Advanced chambers are just like regular chambers, but with some sort of extra thing to spice it up. For instance, they got rid of portal surfaces, replaced the floor with acid, replaced the companion cube with an edge of safety cube, see I told you that one would come back, and of course made the turrets invincible because why not? I will eventually make a subpar strats on for each of these, so don't worry. The second batch is basic rocket and aperture science achievements. You get these achievements by receiving the bronze, silver, and gold medal on all of the trial levels. And by receiving, I mean cheating because some of these are downright impossible. First off, least portals. This one is pretty easy to actually get, not that bad. Biggest worry is probably test chamber 16. Next up is the time trials, nearly impossible, requiring pixel perfect movement, especially in test chamber 16 and 17, assuming you don't cheat of course. And finally, Finally, least steps, which is a mechanic literally so broken that it's encouraged you cheat. Again, expect a subpar strats on these as well. And that really, really is the end of it. I swear. You can stop watching now. This was a triumph. Portal is a game that got me instantly hooked. Its mechanics are amazing, the twist was great, and the puzzles were engaging. As a franchise, anytime I play this game, I immediately replay it because I just can't get enough of this game. And then I play the sequel, and a couple of fan projects go online, look up levels. Look, every time I play this, I want more and more of it. The epitome of good science comes not when the hypothesis is proven, but when it's fun to try to prove said hypothesis. Thank you, Valve. Now please make another portal game. Ellen looks like she's going to kick the bucket any time now and she's the only one who can pull off the GLaDOS voice. Please, I'm begging you.